105 what is the breakfast club good morning we got a special guest in the building the hustler cassidy what's up with you what's up sir everything good man. how's everything I'm glad you acting a little more excited when I first came in the room. It seemed like everybody was down, man. I mean, you know, we got to turn up. This is Friday, man. Now, this is what we do. We turn the, the morning, you know how to turn the on-off switch on easy. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Now, now Cass, I have to say, you let me down a little bit. Yeah. The reason you let me down is because I'm on Twitter yesterday and I'm arguing with people. I'm like, All right. when it comes to songs, Meek Mill might make better songs. But when it comes to battle rapping, he don't want no problems with Cass. He definitely don't. But then I hit a diss record and I'm like, eh, it wasn't what I was expecting. You could have came a little harder. That's because it wasn't a diss record, you know what I'm saying? I was messing around with the beats, got my MP back, was banging out and just put something together. But I just put it out a couple hours after we went through that Twitter situation, so everybody called it a meek diss. But it wasn't. It just was a record that I just put out just to get the street some bars. If I do a diss record, it's going to be on the ether level, if not worse. It's going to be direct. You're going to know it's a diss record. You're going to know who I'm talking about. That was just a little record I just threw out there for the streets to keep them fed. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so my, all the kidnapping your daughter, that wasn't base. Meek. That wasn't for Meek. I don't think Meek nah, none of him. that was for Meek. Oh, okay. you listen yeah, to Meek the bars. Son. You listen to the bars, you could know that wasn't directed at him. That was just, I was just rapping. All right, right. now... What, let's talk about you and Meek Mill for a second, because obviously that's a hot topic that's yeah, been going on. What is the problem with you two? Is it really just over this this battling and then it just went too far, or were there problems before this? Nah, I mean, if you would have asked me a year ago about Meek, you know what I'm saying, I would have had nothing but love for him, you know what I'm saying? I was doing a lot of records with him when he was in Philly before he got in this situation, you know. I bought him out the shows, BB Kings, A, where I was at, I was rocking out with him, you know what I'm saying? But I just felt as though once he got on, things wasn't exactly the same. I don't know if it was because he was busy or he switched his pitch, but I don't know. But I still kept it all all the same, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Until I started seeing him talking crazy on Twitter. I know y'all know like a couple months ago, he started saying little slick stuff on Twitter because I retweeted something somebody said. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure if I read the whole tweet. I just wanted to let him know that people on the street want to see us still do music like how we used to now that he on, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But he started talking crazy on Twitter, so I wanted to wait till I got a chance to see him. What do you I mean by talking crazy? I, I don't I don't remember the exact message he put, but he is up there, you know what I'm saying? Like, he was it something, something you know was directed towards you? Or could yeah, it yeah, not yeah definitely, definitely. It was directed yeah, towards me. He definitely added me. you in the tweets. Yeah, he, he definitely directed it towards me, and he was talking a little crazy, so I wanted to wait until I got a chance to see him. He's talking about, I'm always home, <clears throat> you could come see me, so I'm like, oh, I'm going to wait till I see him to see, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, where we at with it. I seen him at the 2K party, we was busting it up, he was making it seem like everything was cool. I was in the studio the other day, I left it alone. Mm -hmm. And then, um, a little while ago, people start calling me, telling me he wanted to battle me, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And I'm like, that, ain't, that don't make sense to me, he know what I'm capable of, so for him to want to battle me, I, I just don't understand that, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But, you know, I was going to give the money away to charity. We got the sponsors to put up the chicken for us, you know what I'm saying? So I thought it would be good for hip-hop. Mm -hmm. No disrespect to the music y'all play or the music that dudes doing nowadays, but it ain't too focused on bars how it used to be, right. mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Dude used to be focused on saying the craziest things, and now it's more about having fun, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I thought it would bring some excitement back into hip-hop. I thought it would be a good look for hip-hop, mm -hmm. for battle rap is in for the culture period so I was willing to do it mm -hmm. but a little later I found out that he ain't want to battle me he said that he wanted me and Mook to battle and he wasn't really wanting to battle even though he said he wanted to get back in the battle game with underground rappers he did say that mm -hmm. and he said if he could battle somebody that was on it'd be even better mm -hmm. so for me coming to the table I should have fit in that category but you know he know what I'm capable of so I guess he just reconsidered when I said I wanted to do it so once I found that out I left it alone mm -hmm. till I was in the studio the other day and all of a sudden I hear you talking crazy on Twitter again I look at the twit yeah, I got why the tweet here. He said you gotta you gotta get popping first. Yeah, to like me. you know what I'm saying, and I'm thinking like, wow, like you know what I'm saying, like you know, years and years ago when he was probably in middle school, I had plaques on my wall. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, I got platinum singles. So I mean, everybody got their own opinion. You say he make better songs, that's cool. He got his little wave right now. You know what I'm saying to a certain extent, but. I been did that. You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I been laid that groundwork for my city. So for me to be popping, what do you, 
what do you mean? Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I don't really understand exactly what he meant. But at the end of the he day... Mean, I guess he means relevant, like, right now. Like, what's hot at the moment? Yeah, but, you know, once we get into that battle and somebody get their head bit off, then I'm going to automatically be hot again. So that's the... that's. But I don't want people to think it was some publicity stunt on my behalf. Like, I just came up with this plan to attack somebody that's popping right, right. now. Right. I just was responding to what what he was doing and mm-hmm. what he was saying. It wasn't like I initiated it because I've been out for so many years and I never did nothing like that before. The only problems that I ever had before was me responding to something somebody else did or something somebody mm-hmm. else said, not me just trying to attack him. You know what I'm saying? You also had said you weren't going to battle anymore a while ago too. Yeah, Unless the person is, you know what I'm saying, worth me battling. Like, I'm not going to go battle a URL battler. Like, not taking nothing from them. I got a lot of homies that, that do that. Mm-hmm. But it's not really beneficial for me to do that right now. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But somebody that's, you know what I'm saying, coming out with songs and got a deal and running around, it would be beneficial. And it would bring more people out, get more people involved, get mm-hmm. more people excited. So I Philly feel as though so that could small. be the biggest battle of all times if that was to go down. Right, but Philly's <clears> so small. <throat> Nobody ever tried to get in between y'all because it's not like, you know what I mean, everybody knows each other that knows somebody that knows somebody in Philly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without mm-hmm. a question. I hate when Philly rappers beef because, you know, Philly guys really do shoot at each other. And I don't mm-hmm. really think it's like a beef like that. Like, it ain't no, it ain't no real beef. Like, I ain't, it ain't like I got drama with him or like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he shot You don't, my, but the people around you. Like, yeah. he shot my man or something. Mm-hmm. Like, it ain't, it ain't like that. You know what I'm saying? And like you said, it's, it's, it's real dudes, it's real killers around everybody. I'm sure it's, the 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 sweetest rapper probably got killers that have come mm-hmm. around him and hold him down like that's how it be. But I ain't I ain't in it for that. I'm talking and about for hip hop, some... for music, for battling. That's what it's about. Like when basketball teams play each other, it's not like somebody from the Miami Heat gonna kill somebody from the New York Knicks because somebody got dunked on. Mm-hmm. It's just a competitive sport. That's how this music thing started. And I feel as though people take taking that out of out of the out of the game. Mm-hmm. Right. You know and you've also saying? had some legal issues. I'm sure you don't want to ever get back to that. Nah, definitely. I definitely don't want to go back to jail no more. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's definitely not where I need to be. Would you do it, or, or, or are you doing a battle rap? Or are you doing a battle diss song or anything like that? Nah, nah, time, not, no? not unless I have to. I mean, I'm but capable. You know that's how they labeling this record, though. Cassidy dissed yeah, the Meek Mill. Yeah, that's what I said. I know they labeling it that because I put it out a couple hours after the situation I mean, happened. I mean, it does, but it does not... feel like it was some shots at him, though. Like, that he's not really living that life he talks about and... Nah, my my people would tell you. My people would tell you. I already put that together. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was in the studio that night fixing it up, but I already had put that together previous to the whole situation on Twitter. I so, believe that because it sounds a little dated, like the English muffin reference, and I'm like, ah, Cassidy's got better bars than that. I mean, I like that bar. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like that bar. I still you eat better, English muffins. You better break fast. <laughs> Before he get his food ate like an egg McMuffin is like they only serve egg McMuffins at breakfast, so he better break fast like a. I mean, my bars be deep. You know what I mean, some people like it, but ever since the first bar that I ever put out on Big Business, the first two bars of my rap, I can say it to this day, and people still remember it. I got a large house, like that's all I bring to the table is <clears> bars. So it's like, you know. Depending on the type of person you is and what you into, you would like whatever bar I say. But I got millions of them. I got so many of them that it never end. So it's like, I just no, I want definitely to think you, I that. definitely think you get busy. Like, we <laughs> were having this argument yesterday. I'm like, when it comes to a battle, I think Cassidy will watch me. That's why I was, I, the record I was thinking was going to come out was going to be some ether type of but if material. But if, if it was a diss record, it would have been some ether type of material. So, like Charlene, you you're saying back, you want to see a diss record, he, he, basically. He going back to it like that was the diss record. That's not what mm-hmm. it was. It was just a little freestyle I threw out right. at that particular time. It was going to go out anyway. Just so happened that happened between us. The night before, you know what I'm saying? But if I do a diss record, it's definitely going to be a diss record. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be at the top of the all-time diss records. Trust me. Now, you mentioned something about Swizzy in the record, too. Would you get back with Swiss? Yeah, Swiss my homie. Actually, Swiss commented on the me and Meek Mills battle and told everybody that he had put his money on me. Because mm-hmm. Swiss is a smart man. He know what I'm capable of. He's mm-hmm. been around me for years grooming me he been right by my side when i done been in thousands and thousands of battles so he already know how i get it in he know mm-hmm. i'm not a game when it come to that why did so, you decide to separate from swiss um i didn't i didn't necessarily have to you know what i'm saying and we still communicate we still talk you know what i'm saying and we probably gonna get together soon and do some more music swizzy send me that track let's get it popping the world want to see us do it again so that's my man i got nothing but respect for him he mm-hmm. raised me he brought me into the game you know what i'm saying he taught me a lot about 
music and about other things, just life period. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I got nothing but respect for him, and I appreciate the time he did put in with me, even if we never do a record again. Mm -hmm. But, you know what I mean? That's my brother, man. That's my family. Him, his dad, his grandfather, mm -hmm. his uncles, like, we all family. We all yeah. communicate and talk all the time, you know what I'm saying? Or whether we text or however it may be. You also had a partnership with Carmelo. Yeah. Following that. Now, where does that stand? That's over, too? Um, Carmelo, my man, too. The Knicks doing they thing. Shout out to, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? My man, Melo, he balling this year. You know what I mean? I appreciate Melo coming out and showing me the love he showed me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Bringing me in, showing me love. I mean... I done slept in my little crib wild times with his kids and his wife around. Like, you know what I mean? He was treating me like family. So we had a little run. You know what I mean? Melo got a lot going on in his life. Maybe he found out that, you know, getting in the music business ain't as beneficial as the time that you got to put in to do it. Mm -hmm. So maybe he switched this pitch. I'm not sure. You're going to have to ask him. Mm -hmm. But I got nothing but love for Melo for, you know what I'm saying, the time that we did rock out and the love that he did show me while we was together. Mm -hmm. Now, Meek put on Twitter, he said, you can't pave the way would come to my hotel. How did that make you feel? Because, I mean, that was a big record. And you, you put in a lot of work record. for Philly. I mean, y'all on radio, so if you look at the at the radio play it got and in the, in the, in the hundreds of millions of people that it was appealing to an audience on the stations that it was getting played on, you can't say that. You know what I'm saying? It's like one of the biggest records that ever came out the city. So I don't really know. Like, But, you know, that was a J Records move with dropping that as my first single. I would have probably came with something more harder, you know what I'm saying, more down mm -hmm. the lane that I was used to coming in at that particular time. But it still was a crazy record, you know what I'm saying? And I appreciate, you know, J Records for putting the support behind me to have a record like that. Mm -hmm. Like, people saying I ain't popping right now, but it'd be the same thing if I had that 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 monster behind me putting that money into it you would hear my music the same type of way as you always did right. you know what I mean but y'all know how the industry go maybe everybody that's listening don't but y'all know how it go so, so what's you're straight, now? What's, yeah you're straight independent now um well my last project I came out with I was independent I'm working on my album right now and I, I got a few deals on the table independent deals and major situations mm -hmm. and I'm trying to get it popping even more so I could get more major situations on the table or even negotiate a little better to mm -hmm. my advantage so you know what i mean where this you know things about to shut down because it's fourth quarter so mm -hmm. it might be finalized in the in the in the first quarter like when it when it opened back up in january early february i'm trying to have it finalized but the music going to already be done so i could come with my next project first quarter mm -hmm. well i want to ask him some more about these tweets because one thing i did like you did you didn't react at all to what meek said yeah, he, he, he put in your swag corny. You don't even represent <clears throat> Philly, right? How'd that make you feel? I mean, you know, I don't know. I guess he was saying that because he was a little hot. He trying to figure out a, a angle to to come at me. You know what I'm saying? But everybody know I paved the way, not just for dudes in Philly, but dudes. Period. Like you don't know how many dudes was dressing like me and wearing they hat like me and trying to talk like me to this day you go to philly it's still dudes trying to rap like me to this day you know what i'm saying and as far as keeping it real on some street stuff everybody know i hold that side down so i don't necessarily understand what he mean mm -hmm. you know what i mean i guess he mean because i ain't running around wearing a bunch of tight clothes and all that i guess i don't know what he talking about but at the end of the day, everybody got their own style. Everybody dress and act and do things like how they supposed to do it. But that don't got nothing to do with if we came to the table face to face and battle. What do that got to do with it? You know what I'm saying? I could show up in the in the in the bathroom. It's still gonna be the same outcome regardless of the fact. So what happens if you run into Meek Mill now? Like, what would you say to him? Is it a problem? Is it a discussion? Do y'all not know each other? I don't even know what it'd be. You know what I'm saying? I can't predict the future. You know what I mean? It just depends on. You know the attitude he got and how he act when I see him. I mean, the last time I seen him, it was all cool. A lot of people see me in there in the 2K party. I was in his dressing room. It was all gravy. I hollered at him about it. He said everything was cool. But I don't know how he going to react, how the dudes around him going to react. So I don't really know how I'm going to react right. or what I'm going to say and do. Do you feel I like he was disrespectful? Him? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's the reason why I'm willing to battle right now. Like I told you, if you would have asked me a year ago, I'd have been like, nah, I'm not battling Meek. Like, come on. You know what I'm saying? We from the same city. Let him let him do his thing. Let him shine. But right now you asking me what I battle him, yes, because I feel as though he said a lot of things that's disrespectful. So it's not like I want no harm or danger to come to him or, you know what I'm saying, I want to do nothing 
to him or nothing like that. Nothing physical. Yeah, I just want to respond to the slick stuff he was saying. But I don't want to do it on Twitter going back and forth, like busting on Twitter and cracking jokes and all that. Like, I want to put it in a mm-hmm. rap and show who's who's really the best. Because it's a lot of dudes that's older that know the work I was putting in when I was popping. But it's a lot of cats that was babies now and that's in the hip hop. They wasn't even like around when I was doing my thing and they don't really know what I, I'm capable of. Whatever so I want to refresh the old people memory mm-hmm. and you know what I'm saying, let these new cats know what I'm capable of. Whatever happened to that full service chain you had, that huge full service chain? Um, I still got it. I, I, I still got it. It's, um, but I'm not with, you know, I'm not with the full I mean, service not, situation that, that no more, so I ain't so going to put huge. it on. Yeah, that was at least 100, and I was just curious, what what, what did you do? I did you, that. Did you bust it down, <laughs> you know what I mean? Did you pop him out? No, 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 no. I had actually gave it, I had actually had my, my man A.R. top going to Philly, you know what I'm saying? He just dropped the mixtape, Who Harder Than Me, part two. He doing his thing in Philly. So I actually had him running around with it. He was wearing it forever, <clears throat> but it's, it's still around. Mm-hmm. What about the, the accusations of not being in the hood, which I find stupid anyway, because I'm like, we, you don't get money to still want to be in the hood. So when he says, yo, you never, yeah, we don't never see you in the hood. I mean, I was in the hood until my second album dropped. You know what I mean? And that was the mistake I was making. You would turn on MTV and see me. Let's turn on the radio, hear me, and then see me on the corner outside. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, so you're some looking people regular be, to people. Some, nah, some people would be happy about that because they feel as though if they got a dream, they can make it happen and make it come true. But, you know, some people might start off like that, but then it start to grow to hate when mm-hmm. they see all the chicks that they was trying to get with their whole life just going crazy for you. It's like at the snap of the finger, you could have that. You pulling up in cars, you all jeweled out, you got money on you. Like, everybody ain't comfortable with that. So even if it's a sucker, it could cause some problems. And you see the problems I got in, you know what I'm saying? You caught a murder charge. Yeah, so that's when I had to I had to realize like I manned up while I was in jail and realized that I was making a mistake by doing that. Like I be in the hoods, you know what I'm saying? I got footage, I got goons running around in the hood, and when I come through, I'm in and out like a robbery. Like so, if somebody see you every once in a while, it's a it's a good thing and it's a big thing for them to see you. Like yo, what's up? They excited. But if you just there all day every day the same way they is, it's not beneficial, especially if you're doing your thing. Mm-hmm. It's not too many rappers, not too many men. Period. Who beat a murder charge, but you never glorified it like some some people probably would in their in their music. Why why is that? I mean, I know it's nothing to glorify, but why did you never speak on it? Um, I mean, I spoke on it on a, in a, in a couple verses and a couple raps to let people know what I overcame, but there's nothing to brag about. Like I'm. I, I am happy that I beat the case, but I'm not happy that I was in that situation. I'm not even happy that the whole thing went down like how I went down. But I spoke on it in songs like Innocent Man, mm-hmm. which to this day is a lot of people's favorite song that I ever put out because it was so real. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? This music is entertainment. So a lot of the things that I talk about be based on the true story of things that I went through, but not necessarily like the actual story. Like if you got a female and she slept with hundreds of dudes, of course she could write a story about, you know, having, you know what I mean, going out with a dude and how the whole situation was. It don't necessarily got to be a true story, but because she got so much experience in that field, she could definitely write a crazy story about it and how it would go, mm-hmm. even if it's not necessarily true. So that's what I do in a lot of my raps to be based on a true story, but it don't it ain't necessarily happen the way I put it. Mm-hmm. But Innocent Man was like all the way real and you could feel it and hear it in my voice so I did speak on it but you know I don't want to influence anybody to you know what I'm saying be out there shooting stuff up like a lot of rappers do you know what I'm saying because they ain't the way to go regardless if you famous or not like jail ain't a good place to be mm. you know what I mean you feel like a slave if not worse somebody telling you when to wake up when you got to eat when you got to sleep how you could talk how you could walk where you could go like I ain't I ain't used to that and mm. then on top of that there's no females except the CEOs and half of them be looking crazy you know what I'm saying so <laughs> you I, don't even take be, a L. I don't be willing yeah. to take that risk <laughs> And if they come in your cell and they do give you some action, if you that type of dude, they ain't gonna bring no condom with them. Mm-hmm. So ah. it's like you gonna be in a you gonna be in a crazy <laughs> position in right. jail, man. I'm good. Like I if you got life, you might as well though. Yeah, if you, you got, got life, you might as well go raw. Or you could pull out. Um, yeah, but you still get a disease. <laughs> yeah, who cares? Yeah, you got life. Uh, hey, that's crazy. You be itching all, all day. Have, have, have you ever experienced any backlash from like? Because I'm sure the, the dude that that happened to, he got dudes. So why you in Philly? Do they ever want want to get at you? <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm sure the, the dude that it happened to got family and got people with him, but 
it is what it is. Like, it was always dudes that might try to hand your whole life. That's why you got to be prepared for whatever could happen and whatever could go down. You know what I'm saying? That was like the same thing like with this Meek situation. That's the same thing that was. It wasn't me initiating nothing. I was at my crib. Actually, my kid was there. I ain't had my second son yet, but my, my oldest son was there. You know what I'm saying? My baby mom, which is my wife now, she was there. And I bought the crib next door to my mom. So my mom, my stepfather, and my little brother was in the house next door. So I would have never wanted nothing like that to happen. It was just like mm. you Gotta reacting, being defensive. Yeah. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's how I go. Like, you know what I mean? So it is what it is. But in the in the song Innocent Man, you know, I gave the dude that got killed. I mean, like two dudes got shot in the and well, three dudes got shot. One of them died. You know what I'm saying? But I gave the dude that died a shout out, let his family know that if they was in the position that I was in to protect themselves and their family, they would have did the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I don't expect them to be on my side if they somebody that they cool with or their family member died, but they should be able to understand where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we appreciate you stopping by today. Yeah, I appreciate y'all having me, man. You know, this is the biggest biggest morning show in the country. You know, you know what I'm saying? So I'm happy to be here, man. It's yeah. definitely a good look. Yeah, I'm sorry we had to have you here under these circumstances. Yeah, well, no, you know, question. we had already, we're planning to, to have him come up and then all that happened anyway, so. Yeah, so it just She's made lying. it even more That's appropriate. Right. No, I'm not. That's I actually right. was in contact with his manager about it oh. previous to this. I just had called him. I was in LA. In the I said, hey, what you, what <laughs> yeah. you doing? Yeah, yeah it just all happened to coincide. I would have came that same time you called me, but I was in a, I was in a studio. I was on He didn't want to look crazy on camera here. He wasn't ready. I ain't shot in two days. I said, it's all good medieval. First of all, I wasn't dressed. I was high, high as a kite. I was like in another world. I was drinking. I was like in a whole different Perfect. zone. I'm like, Perfect. I don't want to come up there and be all crazy. Can't even answer the question right. Sounding crazy. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted to get myself together first. No, we appreciate well, oh, you stopping before by. Before you leave, what could resolve the Meek Mill situation right now? Um, Without it being any diss records, any yeah. physical altercations, he, what could he, just resolve it right now? If he just come out and say, you know what I'm saying? You know, he don't want to battle, he don't want to do nothing no more. You know, stop tweeting crazy stuff about me. I would never tweet nothing about him. You see, I don't even tweet no real stuff anyway. You know what I'm saying? So I never tweet nothing about him. I never say nothing about him. You know what I'm saying? And that'd be that. Like, you know what I'm saying? We could leave it alone. It ain't like it's too crazy. Like I said, real street drama where I could never end it. You know what I'm saying? It ain't really nothing from the beginning. I just, I'm just so competitive. I just wanted to make it happen, and that's it. Well, that's you know, we can't let you leave without doing something live. Yeah, because you know, everybody heard that record that you put out yesterday, and they're like, eh, I don't know. I don't know, Cassidy still got it. I don't it. know, man. I was on, I was Pressure. online, and I was on Twitter. A lot of people was feeling it, man. A lot of people love it. You know what I'm saying? But everybody got their opinion. I've heard way more vicious bars from you than. You. Yeah, but that wasn't. You know, every song ain't gonna be. You ain't gonna drop your most vicious bars every song. Like all the songs I be hearing y'all playing every morning, there's no vicious bars. A lot of bars garbage. Yeah. A lot of, <laughs> lot of garbage. 90% like, garbage. I don't hear one vicious bar out of a whole 30 yeah, minutes of music. Absolutely right. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it is what it is. Don't be so hard on me. You're yeah, absolutely right. <laughs> yeah, man. All right, well, we're waiting. Um, <laughs> listen, I just want everybody to know that. I got a strong relationship with God, so I'm on this big radio show, and I got the opportunity to speak to a lot of people. I'd rather do something like that. If y'all want to hear that grimy stuff or that street stuff or the things I've been through, y'all could download my new mixtape, Mayhem Music. You know what I'm saying? I, well, it's not new. It's been out for a little while, but it's still a lot of people that ain't heard it, so you could download that or any of the freestyles that I'm about to bring to the table. But right now... I'm going to just show people that I am more mature and I don't stay on the same topics. And, I, you know what I'm saying? I got a head on my shoulders. You have been through a lot. Yeah. So I said, I love my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, with all of my heart. His light shines bright when it seems like life is all in the dark. He make you feel like it's all right when life is falling apart. And he always there to hear me when I call him to talk. He could turn your guilt into grace, your sin into salvation. So be patient when you're going through trials and tribulations. He's the creator of all creations, the ruler of all nations, who was crucified to save us from Satan and damnation. Now, temptation hard to resist. Hypocrites will try to mislead you. But I believe in God and that he provides for his people. He with you when you lonely, you hungry, then he'll feed you. And it's the truth that money's the root to all of this evil. 
That's why it's hard for the rich to get in heaven. The wealth will tarnish your soul. And knowledge and understanding is better than silver and gold. Your lust for money can make you burn like you cooking over the stove. But faith can make you twice as rich. I read this in the book of Job. Now, I was told the Bible hard to understand because they wrote it back in the days. But if you pray, you'll be amazed how you comprehend every page. Now, Easter, Christmas, and all the Christian holidays was made to generate paper, not to give the maker his praise. And now in this world we live in, then been filled with hatred and war. We supposed to love each other, but not many spirits are pure. Soon Jesus will be back, that's in Matthew 24, to destroy the world with fire. He did it with water before. So get on your knees and repent to the king and sing the gospel. If you believe the blessings you'll receive will probably shock you. You righteous and follow his commandments, they can't stop you. The devil is going to try to knock you, but God got you. From Genesis to Revelations, the Bible was education. I'm dedicating my life to Christ instead of Satan. But instead of waiting till your spirit is levitating, awaken out of that spell because hell is devastating. Hey yo, the king been thrown, you sending your skin and bone, but you ain't gotta swim in the fire and brimstone, cause you ain't in it alone. He's here to protect you, and he never neglects you. He's here to accept you. When wrong, he corrects you and shows you the right path to live like the righteous as long as your life lasts. Cause you should love God more than you like cash. Living a fast life will bring an end to your life fast. Worship the Lord, he created the earth and heaven. And please read John chapter 1 verse 7 and try to walk in the light nobody perfect brethren but i believe the words of proverbs chapter 11 and i ain't trying to knock nobody else's religion i just opened up my eyes and i made a wise decision see satan divide and conquer the conquer he need division but it's only one god it should only be one vision when you walk with god no strength is lost so keep walking when you talk with god no breath is lost so keep talking when you wait on God, no time is lost, so keep waiting. Some people hate, but no love is lost. Keep hating. The evil won't survive when my God defeats Satan. The water's going to roar and the mountains that keep shaking. Therefore, to praise God what we here for. The devil going to try to stop you, but God got you. Right. Amen. There's a lot of bad bitches in the building. <laughs> Amen. That could have been the remix verse. That could have been that shit. Cassidy is the Breakfast Club. <laughs> it's Power 105.1. <laughs>